Hey guys, <clears throat> getting ready to start my second attempt on the uh, Lots of Love Billiard. And uh, if you saw my Facebook post, you know that I screwed up on the first one and accidentally cut into the shank when I was uh, using the hole saw for the uh, uh, shape of the bowl, or to get the basic shape of the bowl. But anyway, uh, get ready to start on number two. And uh, me and Scott were talking about my lathe setup the other day, and I wanted to real quick show uh, my crazy lathe setup. And my lathe has powered the original speed controller went out, <clears throat> and the lathe was always underpowered anyway. So I got to researching online see what other people were doing and a lot of people were using uh, treadmill motors to power their mills and lathes so uh, that's what I did this right here is actually a treadmill motor and if you can see it in the video hopefully this is the electronics out of the uh, treadmill and then this is my pretty little treadmill in my shop the controller for the lathe and uh, it runs off of a jack shaft I've got two pillow blocks there and a jack shaft that runs the lathe but the great thing about running it off of a DC motor is that at low speed you don't lose all your torque like you do with an AC motor turn it on here a little bit hopefully you can see I can make the lathe just barely crawl if I want to and I don't lose all my torque. I don't recommend trying to stop the chuck with your hand, but not the best safety idea. <clears throat> but uh, that gets me still complete variable speed. Just notice my carriage is still in gear, but uh, anyway, there's my lathe set up. It's not very big, just a seven by ten Harbor Freight El Cheapo, but it gets the job done until I can get something else. Uh, over here is my pipe making assortment, different stems and different bins. Sandpaper already cut down to one inch strips, all kinds of pipe parts, and uh, those garbage bag there that I used to keep the dust out of the bins when I remember to put it down. All right, guys, <clears throat> I wanted to show you a little jig tool or whatever you want to call it that I made. <clears throat> It's a little indicator, pointer, whatever you want to call it, to help line my block up for drilling. Uh, I don't have a fancy set of jaws for my lathe with the centering pins and all that stuff in it. Uh, so I have difficulties lining up to drill. So this is just a, a piece of coat hanger, and I painted it red. Uh, to make it show up better so I can see what I was doing better but you can slide this up and I don't know if you can see the lines on the block or not maybe you can uh, turn that around where you can see but uh, the bottom of it where it goes into the chuck you can line up for your point back here and then you can follow the the pin along your line to make sure that you've got the the block angled right in your chuck. And the way I do it, I just put it up there. And of course, I've already got it lined up. I didn't know how to do that on video, but that really helps me a lot lining my block up. Take that out of there. Put my center drill in. Alright, I'll 
get me a little starter here for my draft hole. Thirty seconds is what I use on most draft holes. Want your draft hole in your chamber to line up like it's supposed to. Don't get in too big of a hurry drilling and keep backing out to clear that bit. If not, the bit will get loaded up and it'll start drilling off center. Probably don't go more than a quarter of an inch at a time, I don't guess, an eighth to a quarter. Reline the block for the mortise. Alright, got the block turned around, ready to drill the mortise. And again, I did the same thing on the little guide pin here. <clears throat> turned it around and got it lined up with the guide pin. The only thing about using one of these. <clears throat> before you stick it in there to line the block up, lay it on something flat like your lathe bed or uh, the back of your bench vise and make sure that it's good and good and flat, good and straight doesn't have any bends in it or obviously you won't be drilling straight we'll go ahead and clean the end of this up just a little bit the Forstner bit to my 5 6 inch for my tenon and on my lathe on the uh, tailstock I've got a uh, a measurement on the quill that comes out of the tailstock so what I do is get the tailstock zeroed out and bring the bit up to touch the end of the block and then I use my gauge on the uh, quill there to tell when I'm in the right depth Again, take your time and you don't want egg shaped holes.
Now the next thing that I do is change to my hole saw bit for my shank. Get a measurement here. Make sure that I don't go in too deep with it. doing with this is just getting the basic outside shape of my shank, getting it down close to the size that it needs to be. Now what I do is put a mark on here to help me be able to see better to make sure that I don't trim that off too far. And I use a parting tool. May not be the best thing to use with this, but it's what I use. You always want to keep your tail stock on a wood lathe, but not tail stock, but your tool rest. I always want to keep that as close as possible to your workpiece. Let's trim the shank up. the video there I thought about something uh, some people like <coughs> on, on making a cut like this some people like to come in from the end rather than from the side like you normally do on a wood lathe and uh, that's fine I guess whichever way you prefer to do but I thought I'd turn it around like this and show you how to do it that way too, just in case you want to do it that way. Alright, so that's got all that excess <coughs> turned out off of the uh, outside of the shank. And like I said, it doesn't make any difference whether you want to cut in from the end of the shank or if you want to cut from the side of the shank like that. <coughs> uh, 
whichever one's more comfortable for you. Alright, now we'll get her turned around here in a minute and we'll do the uh, the bowl. Alright guys, <clears throat> again I used my little indicator tool that I made, this one here, to line up with my guidelines on my block and get it clamped down in the chuck. Now I'm going to drill my pilot hole <clears throat> uh, for the spoon bit for the chamber. Portioner bits dull. Cheap bits. Change out to my spoon bit. chamber you'll notice that when the spoon bits get to the bottom of the uh, pilot hole the the shavings will change from long ribbons like that to little small shavings. But just when you run in, run, get to the bottom of your pilot hose. All right, guys, I was going to show you this too. I about forgot. Uh, I do just like most guys do when I start getting close to depth on my chamber and uh, shoot some air in there and when it blow shoot some air in the shank and when it blows air out the chamber then you know you're close to having your depth right. <clears throat> Not yet. And there's the dust plane. <clears throat> that way we know we're getting air through there. So we're just about there. I'll start checking it again. I'm going to use a hole saw to uh, cut the outside of my bowl, <clears throat> only this time I'm going to try to knock the screw up and get into my shank with it. Right there. <clears throat> then I'll come back 
bring my tool rest up here and again with the parting tool I'll take that excess off What I do on the front of my or rim of the bowl, is use a spindle gouge to trim up the rim. shaping on the outside of the bowl. Put just a little bit of taper on it. Okay guys, I, I wasn't going to show the uh, hand shaping. I figured everybody knew how to do that just fine but then I thought well they may want to see how I do it so <clears throat> I'll show a little bit of the hand shaping here
All right, guys, that's pretty well got her shaped, what I can do on the lathe. I'll hit it with some 320 sandpaper. <clears throat> All right. Some of you might want to see the sander that I use. Uh, <laughs> this is what I call Big Red. When I was making knives, I needed a good uh, belt sander or knife grinder. And uh, there was one made similar to this. It's called a Bader. Uh, Bader brand name uh, grinder, knife grinder, and they wanted about fifteen hundred bucks for that thing. So uh, I looked at it and I thought, Shh, I ain't got fifteen hundred bucks, but I can make that thing. So I had an old buffer motor, variable speed, and uh, got some one-inch thick metal and some square tubing, some pulleys. And this is my my version of a fifteen hundred dollar sander. I'll turn it on for just a second and uh, <clears throat> let you see it run. But then I'll uh, when I start sanding on the uh, the pipe, I'll have to turn the mute to volume because uh, it gets pretty loud. But <clears throat> this is how she works. <laughs> Talking about moving, removing some metal, big reel do it. So sanding the pipe down, did <laughs> nothing for it. It'll flat eat it up. Got a 36 grit belt on it right now. Uh, I usually start with that and then change to, I believe it's a 220 or 320 belt to get a little bit closer. Alright guys, that's how I get the rough sanding done. Of course then I move down to a, uh, a finer grit belt to get a little bit closer. That 36 grit, uh, 36 grit takes, takes it down so quick that I don't trust myself on it with a 36 grit. <clears throat> 
that. Everybody keep it smoky. We'll see y'all later.